Welcome to the Public Health Academy. Today I'll discuss an important topic called rate ratios, also known as incidence density ratios. The next is a list of learning objectives that will be covered in this mini lecture. First one is, of course, the review of contingency tables, define health events, as well as person time data and rate ratios, as well as explain the rate ratio equation and a practice problem. To review the contingency table, as we discussed in previous videos, we stated that a contingency table is a type of table that shows the frequency distribution of variables. These tables are displayed in a variety of public health disciplines, such as epidemiology, biostatistics, and the social behavioral sciences. You can also include environmental health as well as health policy. With the creation of contingency tables, Public health professionals, like yourself, are able to calculate measures of associations, such as risk ratios, odds ratios, and rate ratios. The contingency table has four categories based on both the exposure and disease status, along with the respective total columns. Examples of exposures include smoking, contaminated food, roaches, and air pollution from highways. Examples of diseases also include HIV AIDS, type 2 diabetes, asthma, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Next, I'm going to discuss a health event. A health event, based on the definition that I have put on the slide, is the following. It describes the health status of an individual or population. Information on an individual or population's health status can come from the following sources births, death, or disease registries and health surveys. Examples of a disease registry is SEER, and SEER stands for the following. Surveillance Epidemiology and End Results Program. An example of a health survey is the following. You can write this down. It's the BRFSS Health Survey, and that stands for Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System. Next we have is person time. Person time is the amount of time that each participant has contributed to the overall study and is measured in different ways. This includes days, months, and years. Next, we have the rate ratio equation, and it is stated on this PowerPoint slide. So here, as you can see, the first part of the rate ratio equation is the health event divided by the incidence rate of exposed. And as I discussed in previous slides, a health event can either be birth, death or someone's disease status. And then the second part of the rate ratio equation is the health event divided by the incidence rate of the unexposed group. Here you have is a contingency table with person time data. On the left part of the contingency table is the exposure status. Exposure status, of course, is stating if someone is exposed to a certain um, Exposure that can in increase their risk of developing a health illness or if they have a risk factor in which they are susceptible to disease. Next, you have the health event. That health event can be deaths, it can be births, it could be disease status. And then you have person time. And person time, as I stated in previous slides, can be measured in days, months, or years. Next, we have a practice problem number one in which we will use the rate ratio equation. Researchers from the Department of Epidemiology at Hunter College Urban School of Public Health conducted a prospective cohort study to examine the relationship between cigarette smoking and the risk of developing lung cancer among 1,500 middle-aged women in Bronx, New York. Among the sample, 400 who were exposed to cigarette smoking developed lung cancer and contributed 4,000 person years. Furthermore, individuals who were not exposed to cigarette smoking 
1,100 developed lung cancer and contributed 17,000 person years. Based on this information, create a 2x2 two two table and calculate the rate ratio. Important information that you should take from this practice problem include the 1,500 middle-aged woman in Bronx, New York, the 400 who were exposed to cigarette smoking and developed lung cancer, as well as their person years, which is 4,000. Additional information includes individuals who are not exposed to cigarette smoking, so that is 1,100 who developed lung cancer and contributed 17,000 person years. Please do keep in mind that these individuals did not smoke any cigarettes. This slide includes results from the practice problem. And here, as you can see, I put a title, which is Cigarette Smoking and the Risk of Developing Lung Cancer. On the left-hand part, you have the smoking status, also known as the exposure status, the lung cancer cases, and their person years. This is the calculations for the rate ratio. So if you were to calculate the rate in which someone developed the disease, it will be 400 divided by 4,000 among the exposed group. And then the latter part of the equation is the health event divided by the incidence rate of the unexposed, which is 0 0.0064. When we take both of these numbers, we get 15.6 person years. Also, please keep in mind that for person years, you can calculate it based on the 10th power. So when I mean by the 10th power, I mean 10 to whatever nth power that can be. So that could be 10 to 1, which is 10, or 10 to 2, which is 100, or 10 to 3, which is 1,000. Thank you all for listening to this educational video. Stay tuned for more videos that will discuss important topics that relate not only to epidemiology, but also other public health disciplines.